So we come to the tenth and final commandment in our Ten Commandment study. Exodus 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, his manservant, his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. There's seven items here. Now, what is coveting? I see what you have and I like it. And it's more than like I want. Man, you got a good maid there. She is very reliable and I, I want her. You've got a sexy wife. Ooh, ooh, I want her. That house, what do you want for the house? I'll give you the house. And we can maybe bring the Bible up to date. English, ox. That's a nice tractor you got there. That's a nice lawnmower. Ooh, a riding lawnmower? I like it. I got to get me one. Ass. You know what the ass was in, in the Bible? He, he was an animal that carried burdens. A pickup truck. That's a fine pickup truck you got there. I got to get me one. And remember we talked about earlier in the commandments about the neighbor. And he's not just the guy next door. He's the, he's the guy on the street. He's the guy in the tribe of Judah that we're, or whatever tribe it would be. He's the guy who's in the land of Israel. He is the guy that's in the neighborhood of the of the of the Cana land, he's the guy who's bordering the Cana land. He's the guy who could be across the sea. He could be the guy next to you in the checkout center. And what is the biggest coveting mess that we got today? As we go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter five, and I'll tell you, coveting, and a word that goes with coveting. To make you sin is called advertising. Television commercials make you want to, ooh, I got to have that. And you say, well, that's ridiculous. I work for a donut store. And every time that's, that donut company came out with something, I and they had on the commercials, I'm telling you the truth, I would have people come to the drive-thru. I just, I just saw it on the TV and I got to have one of them. That's coveting. And when you brochure through the catalog, you know, those mail order catalogs that come in and the store catalog and uh, the weekly circulars in your newspaper and, you know, the, the, the Christmas time toy uh, for the children to go oogle and ogle at, you're coveting. That moment, okay, I'm just looking through it. Oh, okay, okay. Ooh, that looks interesting. I, I like that coveting. Well, that looks like a good movie to watch tonight. Coveting. I wish I had a car like coveting. Man, okay, we're to the Tenth Commandment. Where can we not go wrong? I, I have met a couple people in my life who told me I keep the commandments. You can't walk through a grocery store and not come to the checkout and you're waiting to check out. Oh, that's a good candy bar. And get it? Coveting. Oh, bottles of soda, ice cold soda. Hey, yeah, get me, get me the cherry. Coveting. Coveting. Is it yours? No, it's your neighbor's. Coveting. Isn't there a fine line? What did the Bible say? Deuteronomy 5, 21. It's, Neither shall thou desire. Exodus said coveting. Okay. Uh, see, oh, Brother Stiles, you know, you took coveting too far. All right, Deuteronomy 5, 21. Neither shall thou desire thy neighbor's wife. Does that sound familiar? Neither shall thou covet thy neighbor's house. His field, oh, now we got a field. His manservant, his maidservant, his ox, his ass, or anything. <laughs> I wish Deuteronomy wasn't in there. 
got get our 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 pen knife. Got to cut that out. Got to get our you know the, the correction fluid and remove that. Because Deuteronomy chapter five gives us a broader sense: desire and coveting, wanting. And you cannot come out anywhere in our life of a known conscience to say i never coveted you're a liar you just told a false report because every child covered something oh i gotta get a baseball glove oh you see you see tommy's bike tommy's got a knife i wish i had one like that oh mommy you just made cookies oh they smell so good can i And when I preach on the street, I don't preach against women that walk by wearing short skirts or a bikini. I don't preach about people smoking cigarettes or they got a, 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 a bottle or, or a can of beer in there. I don't preach against that stuff. I leave it alone. I mean, I, I've seen it. If there's people over there and, and they're doing dope, I don't care. But I will preach on the street. I will preach about... Okay, number one, we already talked about it. Honor your mother and father. How well did you do that? And remember when we taught honor your mother and father, we did not always 100% honor our parents. We sinned against our parents. That's a basic sin. How about another sin? Thou shalt not steal. Have we not ever taken, isn't there not one person who's not ever besides Jesus? That has not ever taken something without permission, knowingly or unknowingly. You know, even, you know, at the bank, when I went to the bank, th there's a cup with pens in it. I took a pen. I wasn't offered the pen. I wasn't told to take the pen. And there was no sign to say, take a pen free. And I'm going home like, wait, you know what? It was never offered to me, and I stole that pen, which I do steal pen. <laughs> Give me an opportunity. The bank has chained the pens to the counter because of me. Anything taken that was not offered to you, and you did not ask, all right, false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Have you ever told a lie? You mean you never called out sick and you weren't sick? You've never told a story to get yourself out of trouble. You've never given a story and it colorfully added details to the story to make it more, you know, soothing and more interesting. You ever done that? You have never looked through. I don't have. I'll, I'll catch my daughter. They'll come in the mail and I, I look at No, don't look at it. It's coveting. And even when you make a groceries list, which everyone should make a grocery list before going to the store, especially one big outlet store that's closed all the other stores, you ought to make a list. But when you're going through that, ooh, that sweet corn looks good. <laughs> coveting. All right, when I walk by the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, coveting, <laughs> oh, my wife that, that's in Gloria now, she walked by the lobsters. The lobsters would move in the back of the tank if they're alive. Coveting. They're coveting too. No, 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 not us. And when we come to the final commandment that we're studying today, no one, and listen, you got a blind person, and no disrespect. All right, they can't see it. But if they're walking through the grocery store and the bakery is baking nice fresh bread or cake, does not the nose say, Ooh, that's, oh, I wish I had some of that bread? You know? It's for somebody with lacking senses. And with Exodus and Deuteronomy put in desire, listen, Jesus said, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after his heart has committed adultery already. You're coveting. All right, you may not jump in bed and get naked and, and, and do the duty of adultery, but you're desiring. And that is the danger 
a pornography, whether it be a magazine looking, looking like a, you know, a circular or a, a magazine, a, a catalog, or it's live, there it is in front of your eyes outside. You know, when your neighbor's wife is outside and she's skimpily dressed, whether she's sunbathing and doing whatever she's doing, and you're ogling her, you've committed adultery. You are committing covetousness. You are... <clears throat> Look at that. That's why Jesus said with her. Who's ever looking upon a woman to commit... A, whoever look at a woman to lust after his heart to commit adultery with her? 95% of the times... When that man is arguing that woman, she is doing something or has done something or dressed herself or make up herself for men to do it. You say, what about 5%? There are Christian women who dress right, do right. Uh, they don't have any makeup. And there are men who have sexual fantasies with them. And listen, everything is covered up. Everything is nice. Every, and it's not their fault. So... Okay, let's close the Bible. We're done with the study. No, we're not. Romans chapter 13. You, you were hoping, I, if you've studied along with it, you were hoping I wouldn't go to Romans. A bunch of Gentiles. Paul's writing to a, a Christian church. Christians in Rome. And he's followed along with most of the commandments that we've studied, set for, and you have not seen, we've looked at it, the Sabbath. Nowhere in the scriptures for the church, the born-again Christian, is it found for us to honor the Sabbath. Our day of rest and service to the Lord is the first day of the week, the resurrection. The Jewish time is when the Lord rested from the creation of the six days and rested on the seventh. The Jews were to show the world, the Gentiles, seven-day rest. We're taking a rest. Why are you guys taking a rest? Because this is a day that, he, that God, for six days, he made the heavens and the earth. He made the cows. He made the animals. He made the birds. He made everything. And on the seventh day, he rested. He said, it's all very good. I'm just going to take a rest. The seventh-day rest of the Jewish people say, we believe in a creator. We believe in a creation. What is it for the Christian? Why do you go to church on the first day of the week? What is so special about the first day of the week? The first day of the week is the day that Jesus Christ arose from the grave, that the women went go to the grave. They found the stone that rolled away, and the two angels proclaimed, He is not here. He is risen. That's what it is. We still believe the creation, and we still believe in the Creator, but we have the Almighty God, Jesus Christ, up from the grave He arose. Romans chapter, what is it, 13, verse 9. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. That would be coveting your neighbor's wife. But listen, even remember what I said? Next door neighbor, on your street, in your city, in your state, in your country. In other, you're at the beach and you're arguing a strange woman. She's still your neighbor because she's next to you. And hey, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And look at the end, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You're not loving your neighbor if you want his stuff. You ain't loving your neighbor if you're sexually fantasizing, committing adultery in your heart with her. So there we go. Under the law and under... The, the doctrine of grace by the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 7 7. <clears throat> Romans 7 7. We've got a great study coming up, Lord willing. Evil. We're going to look at evil in the Bible. You're probably saying, you know what? This study's been evil. Only to those that love darkness and hate the light. Romans 7, 7. 
What shall we say then? Same book to the Romans. Is the law sin? No. <laughs> God forbid. Nay, have I not known sin, but by the law. The law teaches us what sin is. This Ten Commandment study is to show, you know what, you can't keep the commandments. And these basic Ten Commandments, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what it's to teach you. I'm a sinner. I've taken things. I've lied. I have not been proper to my parents. I'm a sinner. For I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust. We know what lust is. <laughs> you know, we think of pornography. We think of, you know, sexual disgrace. But really? Except the law has said, thou shalt not covet. Did you just hear what Paul just said? Paul linked the word covet. Your neighbor's goods, your neighbor's stuff, that you know, that sandwich you just saw on the TV with lusting. Now you would think lusting, you thought lusting is a sexual desire that's not clean. And yet, when you look through that catalog and your eyes are ogling the lusts of the eyes, the lusts of the flesh. And the pride of life, you know, oh, oh, look at my neighbor's tractor. Wow, look how good that thing is. Ooh, I bet you, uh, yeah, you know, that's the lust of the eyes. Eve looking at the tree. Oh, I got to have one just like that. Man, I, 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 maybe I'll get that one. That's what Eve did when she desired the tree. The lust of the flesh, I got to have it. I'd be the main man in the street if I had that. The pride of life. Well, you know, evil. Well, you know, oh, yeah, I can get knowledge of, of good and evil. The three tools found in First John of the devil. And advertising is to make you ogle and be the lust of the eyes. I want that. I don't have it. I, oh, I got it, but they got a new and approved. Ooh. It'll make me not have to work so hard. Oh, it's a great product. Pride of life. I gotta have it. Lust of the flesh. That's it. It doesn't have to be a gross, wicked sin to be lust. Well, look at the burger joint. They got new French fries. They look so good. And you're watering as a man would water after an adultery affair with a woman. And the Bible says about that adultery, she wiped her mouth and said, I've done nothing. And you're over there wiping your mouth after you had those French fries that you bought that you had to have. Ooh, that hurt. Especially for those who studied the Bible know what I just said came out of the Bible. Proverbs. Do you realize you're not only coveting, you're not only desiring, but you're lusting when you want something you don't have? And grocery stores, listen, I worked grocery stores since I was 17 years old. And I've been in... in training session i've been in on the meetings i've been in when they talk about this is how you set the shelf because this height all the children can see and you put all the expensive goody children's cereal <coughs> where they can see it and you put this over here because <coughs> excuse me forgive me and you put eye candy is what they call it it catches the eye Pretty, listen, advertisement, they just don't pick, oh, uh, what color we're going to use. No, we're going to use red because red stands out. And if you do a search, colors have a certain attraction to your eyes and say, ooh, ah. Listen, when you look at that burger that's on that menu, that's not a real burger. That's wax. It could be red lipstick. 
It could be uh, glue. It could be anything made up as a model to make it look like a hamburger. So you will look at that and drool and lust and covet and desire, which is a sin. And it all attracts to the lust of the eyes. And whatever the devil did about that tree, it got Eve to say, I got to have it. And many people say, I got to have it. Too many people go get it. But we've talked about the sin of just, I got to have it. That man that covered that woman didn't go get her. He sinned. And it's just as worse to go get her. But they're both sins. Advertising field and the merchandise field is gain to get you to say, uh, yes, yummy. And then you go with jingles. You fall for jingles. Listen, the restaurant market has it where they know what music to play at the right time to get the customers to do what they want to do. And that's another form of advertisement and marketing. Now we're going from advertising, look at the flesh, to marketing to get you the pride of life. Exodus 18.21. Exodus 18.21. Exodus 18.21 Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, that's good, men of truth, great, hating covetousness. Not just not coveting. Hating it. They've turned off the TV and they closed the catalog and say no. So you go drive down the highway, what's the devil in the world do? They put it up on a big billboard. Devil's slick. The world is slick. How are the officers of your church? Do they fear God? Are they men of truth? Do they hate covetousness? Ooh, that's a hard one. Deuteronomy 5, 21, we look at the desire. Joshua 7, 21. Remember that desire? Joshua 7, 21. When I saw, now this is Achan, and this is Achan's sin. And with a Babylonian garment, uh, let's see. When I saw the lust of the eyes among the spoils, a goodly Babylonian garment. Woohoo, that was really good. That was something to die for. And 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them. Notice he coveted. He didn't take them yet. Coveting and taking are two complete sin. There is the sin of, ooh, I got to have it. I like it. Ooh. And then there's the sin, I'm taking it. The sin as in someone else's wife. Now, if you go if you go in the grocery store and you buy stuff and you pay for it, that's not the sin. You get a grocery list and you buy everything in the grocery list and you buy some extra stuff. Me, that's not a sin. Buying and, and taking, it's wanting. Well, you know, uh, look at that tractor my neighbor has. Okay, that's the sin. Going down to the store and buying it. Is that a sin? Did you need it? Is it a waste of money that you bought that one that your neighbor has? Is it waste of money that you bought a, f a few more nickels 
because it's the new and approved. And it just has a sticker on it. It's probably the same old stuff. And if it's something you really did not really need and you spent extra money for, isn't that a waste? And when Jesus' miracle of the two fish and the seven loaves, and they gathered 12 baskets of fragments, he didn't waste nothing. So when you go out wasting your money because you're letting your eyes get, get the best of you, and you wolf down that sandwich that you just saw on TV and you really didn't need it, and the next day you're going to poop it out, and you could have made something just as better in your own kitchen, you waste it. And when you waste the money that God's given you because you coveted and you desired, would that not be a sin? And when we're told not to covet, not to desire, we might go into first implications like Eve did and say, okay, let's just do it. Now, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, mayonnaise. Now, I like the salad dressing mayonnaise. Now, if I go on a commercial and I see the name brand salad dressing, you know, it's, you know, and it just got dancing girls and all kinds of stuff like that and talking rabbits. and Oh, if I go and buy the name brand because of the commercial and the store brand is the same thing, it's a dollar cheaper. I wasted God's money by Wasting extra money. See, advertising and merchandising doesn't want you to think. They want you to look, take your hand, physically grab it, and put it in your car, and don't think about there's other cheaper things on the, on the shelf. And when you see that name brand spaghetti sauce, this is somebody who's worked in the grocery store. I've been a stalker. I've been a grocery assistant. Take your eyeballs, look down. Take your eyeballs, look up. Because up or down is going to be cheaper than that name brand price. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I've been so, so with a grocery store, uh, it was a can of something or a jar of something. I forget what it was. And New products came out, open up the box, I'm stocking the shelf, and the cans got smaller. But the price didn't get smaller. And after there was five old items on the shelf, after the five items of the shelf would sell out, the bigger size, the older size, you'd be grabbing the smaller size and paying more money for less volume. You got to watch out for those people that want your money. They're, they're not looking out for your welfare. I've learned some of their tricks. So here's a man that coveted and then he went and took. And he did not need a television set. He did not need a commercial. Oh, the evils of television. You can covet at a flea market. At a farmer's market. We did that one day. My wife would pass on it. Love strawberries. And okay, I'll get you strawberries. I love you. Here we go. I'll tell you what, I'll get you one of those big, oh, they had those big flat, whatever they call them. I don't know what they call them. My wife took them home. I bought them, took them home. And when we put them on the, we put them on the freezer and the next morning, the freezer was red. They had had all the bad strawberries on the bottom and the good ones, the eye pleasing ones on the top. That's them deceiving. All right, Mark 7.22. Mark 7.22. See, don't put the good, beautiful ones on top. Mark 7. You know, a woman may fancy herself all up and then, then realize, you know, the next morning you wake up. Ah! Mark 7. That's what makeup does. You know, it makes eye pleasing. Makes eye candy. Makes, ooh. Remove that, that makeup. Mark 7, 22. 
thefts. That's right, that's the O. Covetousness. Well, let's look, let's, let's look at the, 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 the ingredients of what, what. Verse 21. For within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. That's not good. Adulteries. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Fornication. Murders. Thou shalt not kill. Theft. Covetousness. Wickedness. Deceit. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. Blasphemy. Pride. Foolishness. All these evil things come from within. Jesus said covetousness is evil and it's got a nice great character of witnesses and next door neighbors next to what he said. Now think about these items here. What if there was a street in each of these characters? There's a house, his name is Thief. There's a house, his name is Wickedness. There's a house, his adultery lives there. And there's a house, there's pride living. On that same street, is covetousness. It's not a good neighborhood. It is not healthy for the Christian in his eyes or nose to smell the bread. We got a donut shop over here, and we, I, I I'm going to assume I, that they have a spray or something that they spray that the whole neighborhood smells like they're doing. I don't know, but. Wouldn't get past it. You know, like that new car smell everybody loves. You get in that car. Oh, cover team. It's a car. They all have keys. They all need gas or diesel. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you for my senses. Luke 12, 15. You need a preacher to wake you up. This world will deceive you. You need a pastor of a good church, a good pastor, to say, Sheep, you know what you are? But yeah, you're bad. You're also dumb. <laughs> sheep is the dumbest an animal. Sheep will fall for this. That's why you need pastors. That's why God gives gifts to pastors. Like, you know, a pastor should not work because he should spend his time in the Word and looking at things and say, You know what? That's wrong. That is wrong for my sheep. I got to teach my sheep. I got to show my sheep that. That is wrong. They're deceiving you. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. So look at that. For a man's life consists not of what abundance of things which he possesses. Look at all the stuff my neighbor's got. Get your eyes off it. Beware of it. And you're only going to make the people that have the storage units richer by placing all your junk in them. People who have those storage centers make their money on people who covet things that they cannot fit in their own house anymore. Merchandising makes money on people who go to the store, oh, I got a habit. Those end shelves at the stores, they're not placed there by accident. And the items that are placed on those end shelves are not accidentally paid. But let me tell you something about those end shelves at the supermarket. When you see a product there of a name brand, sometimes it's a store brand, the store you're buying it. But if it's a name brand product on the end caps, the end shelves, they paid a pretty price for that spot. Because that's the one that catches your attention before you go into the aisle. You you look at those things. You, you check me out and see if I'm wrong. And then you go down where, okay, here's this candy. It's on the end shelf. All right. Now go check the store candy of that item and see which is cheaper. The one that was on the end cap is more expensive. You'll notice that around holiday. The name brand stuffing at, uh, at Thanksgiving will be on the end cap. It will be. The name brand. So Romans 129.
Listen, I had to set up my aisles to what they tell me for people to get. Ooh. 129. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication. Uh oh, there's that. Wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisper. That's a great neighborhood. <laughs> but look who shows up in that neighborhood. Covetousness. It's not a good neighborhood to be in. Covetousness will be wood, hay, or stubble. First Corinthians five ten. First Corinthians five. There are nine other studies we did with this. We did an introductory, and I think we did a. We did another one. About the law, or something like that. But go back and get them. They're good. 1 Corinthians 5, 10. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of the world. That's not good. Or with the covetous or ex, ex, extortioners. Or idolaters. I don't have idols in my heart. Catholic Church, they got idols. Ooh, bad Catholic, bad Catholic. Are you coveting? Well, you want something that's not yours? Well... You're matched in with the evil Catholics. You're no better. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. All right. Division, separation is a Bible doctrine. If any man that is called a brother, say, be a fornicator. Ooh, that's not good. Or covetousness. That man over there committed adultery. Shame on you. Oh, the evil of adultery. Covetousness. That's you. That's one of the things that everybody does, remember? Or an idolater. Oh, that's the Catholics. <laughs> or a railer. A drunkard? Oh, I wouldn't drink. I, I'm I'm a Baptist. I'm I, I don't drink. Yeah, but do you covet? You're in that neighborhood. You are in the Mister Neighborhood. You fit right in there. All have sinned. There is no different degrees of sin. There is no this sin is the worst and this is the bottom. You know why this is the bottom sin? Because that's the sin I do. I see other people say, I'm good. Well, what, what is good? Good is what I like. See, that's not good because I don't do that. But that's good because I do that. Uh, chapter 12, verse 31. This is why a lot of Christians fall away from me. Because I preach the truth. I teach the truth. They don't like the truth. Have I therefore become your enemy? Because I, I, I told you the truth. <coughs> First Corinthians 12, 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Here's a good coveting. You want to covet? You want to covet to do right? Covet. That which is God's. Say, God, you got gold, silver, precious stone. I want that. What do I do to get it? God, I'm able to, to win souls of Jesus Christ and take part in the planting of the seed. Lord, I want that seed and I want that. I want to see people get saved. Lord God, you got one word, the King James Bible. I want that. God, you say study and read your Bible. God, I want that. That is a, there is a proper good coveting. That's not lust. That thing that God can give you and you say, I, God, that's my promise. Okay, that promise is not mine. Okay, that's Israel's. Okay, fine. Let it go to Israel. But that's my promise. I want it. Jesus is the way. I want it. I want all the way. Jesus is the truth. I want that truth. That's coveting good. Jesus is the life. I want that life. And not only do I want that life, I want my family to have that life. I want my co-workers to have that life. I want my neighbor to have that life. I want Pete. That's a good, great coveting. 
So you can covet that which is good and get gold, silver, precious stone. But what about the other nonsense junk of the world? If it's the world, it is a sinning coveting. If it's of God and of the scriptures and holiness, that's a good coveting. So there is a coveting that will get you wood, hay, or stubble. I had to think there for a minute. And then there's a bad, uh, there's a, I, I messed that up. Get that right. Forgive me, Lord. There's a bad coveting, which will get you wood, hay, or stubble. And there's a good coveting, a holy and righteousness, which will get you gold, silver, and precious stone. Look at that. How's that one? Ephesians 5, 3. Material things of the world is not good. Ephesians 5, 3. Be not fornication, I'm excuse me, but fornication. There's that uncleanness and covetousness. Notice how covetousness keeps showing up with fornication. Why? I gotta have sex. I gotta have her. Fornication is linked to, to covetousness, and covetousness is linked to fornication. And Paul told us that lust. You can fornicate and you don't have to get into a bed. You can fornicate. I gotta have it. Fornication is not just sex. It's a desire. Remember Deuteronomy 5.21? See, people link a lot of these adultery, you know, just sex. It's not just sex. They got a sex frenzy. It's when you serve another God besides the God of the Bible. When you have another Savior that's not Jesus Christ. Five, five. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, or nor unclean person, nor covetous man, oh, that's a good company, Who's an idolater? Did you get that? Catholic Church or idolatry. The covetous man who is an idolater. Not me, I'm a Baptist. You're an idolater. You're idling that man's lawnmower, that man's wife, that man's house, that man's pickup truck, whatever it is. Whatever you set your eyes on for the lust of the eyes, you have become, that thing has become an idol, and you have become an idolater, and you don't have to set foot in the Catholic Church. You can go to every good Baptist church and still be an idolater. There it is. Oh, this baseball team, number one, got all, that's idolatry. You've sinned against God. Well, you know, uh, this car show, and I only like this car, idolatry. You sinned against God, whether it be a statue for Mary or be a statue for Baal or, or you know, idolatry. It's a car. It's a lawnmower. It's a woman. It's anything but God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit in the Bible. You have sinned. You didn't like that, did you? Colossians 3 5. Colossians 3 5. You know, you can covet your church to be a sin. My pastor's the only pastor. He's the greatest pastor of all. Coveting idolatry. You lifted a man up besides Jesus Christ. I've seen it. They were doing it in the uh, Corinthian church. I'm a Paul, I'm a Silas. I don't listen to any preacher but this preacher. I got all his, his cassette tapes, and when he came to CDs, I got all the CDs. I got all his, I didn't read his books, but I got all his books, and I got his picture on the mantle above my fireplace. Idolatry. And when that guy's there, when he comes to our church, I'm right there every single time, but I'm not there any other time. Idolatry. Caution 3 5. Mortify, that means dead. You know, you go to a mortician. Mortify therefore now your, your your members, your body, the things of your body, which are upon the earth. Fornication, there it is that word again. Uncleanness, there's that word again. Inordinate affection, odd, weird affection. Save the whales. 
Oh, the koala bears are dying in Australia. Oh. Take the cooked koala bears and bring them to the people starving in India and let them eat of those. <laughs> I just made somebody mad. I shouldn't have said that. Evil could fix it. And covetousness, ready? Which is idolatry. You mock the Catholic Church for their statues and their beads and their worship of Mary and proclaim that's idolatry. And then you want that sandwich at the sandwich shop. You want that car that they produce and maybe a year and color. You want that school. You want that sports team. You want that church. You want that preacher. You want, you want, you want. That's idolatry. That's coveting. That's desire. You are in a violation of the 10th commandment. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all, the uh, cleanse us from our sin and cleanse us from all right. I blew that first. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Got excited there. Don't you go be knocking the Catholics if you're committing idolatry yourself. That is called a hypocrite. Ooh. You say, Stiley, you, you covet? Yeah, I do. Do you knock the Catholics? Yeah, I do. What do you do? I confess my sins. Isn't, these, isn't this great Ten Commandments study so great? Isn't it show how great we are? Isn't it great that I met one man in my life that he's never sinned? I came to one man that never did sin, the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 3.3. 3. Oh, he's got more. He's got more. 1 Timothy 3.3. 3, 3, 3, 3. Now, this is the bishop. Not given to wine. That's good. No striker. Not greedy of filthy liquor. Not in for the money. But patient, not brawler, not covetousness. Well, we've got to have more people in our church. Invite them in. Bring people, bring them. For the numbers or for salvation. So they can go to the, to the meeting that the pastor said, I've got 5,000 people in my church. I had 26 baptisms last week. Where is it lying? You, you're, you know your heart. And I may not be talking about it, but if, I, if the Holy Spirit did that to, you, to your heart, you know, he, he flipped the finger and said, dang, yes, he's talking about you. you need to uh, get your heart right with God. Preachers covet. Everybody covets. Let's put it that way. Everybody. When was the last time you coveted and you confessed? When was the last time when you confessed your sin and say, Lord God, I'm involved in idolatry because I've coveted. I sinned. I desired. I sinned. I have sought more than I have sought for you, Lord. I'm telling you, we had the Lord's Supper last week, this week, this Sunday. That's not one of the sins I confess, I'm sorry to say. I, I'm not going to tell you, but my sins, I know my I didn't confess the idolatry and coveting. And when I take the Lord's Supper, I, I really want to get right. And I, I, I really, I'm serious. The Bible says you could sleep, you could get sick if you don't. I hope the next time we had the Lord's Supper in our church or... You know, I hope the Lord remind me. Uh, hello. What about the sin of idolatry? That's a daily sin, isn't it? For us all. Maybe not for you, but. You know. Oh, I just want to get an extra hour's sleep. Oh, Stiley, shut up. Will you? Now you daily did it. Oh, I was just wanting to hit the snooze button. Shut up, Stiley. You might hit me. I might have hit you yet. 610. First Timothy 610. People turn this off because they don't want the truth. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil, misquoted. While some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. They're saved. There are saved Christians who have the love of money and they have ruined their lives. Why? Because they coveted money and not God. They have coveted mo money and not Jesus. They have coveted paper instead of the Bible. They have coveted to work longer hours for money and income rather than going to church and serve the Lord. Well, I can't go to church because. I got to work. And I know it's hard this day and age. I know everybody's open seven days a week. And it's hard. But you can't make three times in, in, in a week one of the three services that your church has. Talk to your pastor. Say, Pastor, you know. We work for this place and the three times in church services, we all have to work. Can we have another church time added to our church? I don't know. Second Timothy 3.2. Second Timothy 3.2. It's where is your heart? Where is your heart? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. This is today's Christianity unto the rapture. Covetous. There it is. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Oh, there's the honor of the mother father. Unthankful. Unholy. Unthankful. All right, hurry up and eat your turkey. Come on, get the stuffing down your throat. Hurry up, get the dishes because I got to go to Black Flag. They're going to have great sales on TVs that we don't need. And I got to get my tent and I got to sleep out in front of that store because it's going to be a long line. Hurry up and eat so we can get going. I remind people at the farmer's market that that fruits and vegetables came from God. You better thank them for it. But besides that, they're in that list of the apostate of the Christians in the last days, covetous. There it is. We gotta have glass pulpits, we gotta have drums, we gotta have neon lights, we gotta have performance, we gotta have go-go dances, we gotta have you know balconies and balconies of people who don't love the Lord and who don't want to do right. And we gotta have this big thermometer to reach this gold of this church so we can have another thermometer to reach this gold in this church. Covetousness. 2 Peter 2 3, last place. 2 Peter 2 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. That's a great verse to close on. Is that not what I've been saying? Merchandise and advertising. So you can covet. Retail and marketing and and advertising the works of the devil is so you can sin against God and you don't even think about repenting that sin until you heard this video all the way the so next thing you say "Ooh, I gotta have it if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness Lord God be merciful to me the next time we have the Lord's Supper may I remember that idolatry and desire and covetousness in my life. I may do that every day. May the next time I confess my sins, Lord, may I bring that up. To, may you bring that up too. I hope you learn from the Ten Commandments studies and you give to your friends and do whatever you need to do. Just don't, I mean, if you pervert the lesson that's between you and God. But I hope you give these out to your friends and say, you know, this guy is true. This guy speaks from the Bible. You need to hear it. Not, not just because you, but all of us. Listen, I I got upset at this preaching because I found myself at fault. The Ten Commandments is to show we are sinners. We have sinned against a holy and righteous God. You got to remember as we close to, about coveting. Jesus said, I thirst. He wanted something.
and that wasn't a sin. He asked the woman at the well for water. That's not a sin. Coveting when we want to reach our lustly desires of our flesh. When we get something that we really don't need. When we want something we really don't need. That's sin. I mean, we could want a sandwich out of the kitchen. We can want the best for our family. As I said before, there's a, there's a good there's a good coveting, coveting that which is good. The Bible, the Lord, and good thing. There's also a coveting of things that are not so good. Sin. It has to be a balance. Jesus never sinned in. He wanted things. 